smaller lakes offer some great walleye fishing if you can be flexible and adapt your presentations. Often this means fishing in and around weeds. Dick Sternberg and Dan Kennedy are here to show you some of these small lake tactics. Dick, we're fishing this smaller lake this afternoon, kind of a late afternoon. The bite seems to be pretty good. You know, there's literally hundreds of these small, this lake here I think is about three or 400 acres. Now, you wouldn't even think a lake like this would have walleyes, but a lot of these lakes are stocked with walleyes. And uh, they're weed lakes, but they're tough to fish, but they do have walleyes. DNR puts uh, a lot of walleyes in lakes of this type. Uh, you, have to, you have to get some information from the DNR, go through some of their uh, lake surveys, find out which lakes in your area have been stocked, and go out and try them. There's dozens of them around, probably a lot of them right in your backyard. Yeah. You got them, Dan? Yep. All right. I'll get the net. I'll run. Ah. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> I got us in a little bit too close. You can see the weeds are right in the weeds right now. I got to work my way out and get us out to the edge of these weeds here. The fish are laying right along the edge. They let that wind caught us and drifted us back in. You know, on these smaller bass panfish lakes, you've got a completely different type of a pattern here. You're fishing weed edges, uh, sometimes right in the weeds. This particular spot we're fishing right here is, is a saddle. It's kind of like a sandy saddle. It's connecting a big weed flat on this side and a real small weed hump on this side. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to hold the boat right along the windward side of the weeds. You see the wind, the wind is coming right into the edge of the weeds here and the fish are laying, the active fish are laying right in uh, the rougher water on the windward side of the weeds. So it's kind of tricky boat control, just holding it right along this edge. If you're not paying attention, you're right up in the weeds, and if you're uh, too deep, uh, they don't bite. So you gotta, you gotta be right about, actually we're only in about 13 feet of water where we're catching these fish, and there seems to be quite a few of them down there. And these are active fish, because uh, they're feeding. That's why they're here. They're in this, with the wind blowing in their face like that, and uh, there's a lot of perch down there, and they're, they're on the bite. Wind action is an important factor in fishing walleyes on weed lines. The wind and wave action will dislodge insects as well as push plankton out of vegetation. This in turn attracts bait fish, and walleyes will take advantage of this forage. By positioning your boat where wind is coming over weeds towards an outer weed line, you'll be in position to catch these actively feeding fish. That's real, real typical for these little lakes like this. You know, you've got, generally you've got real soft, muddy bottom along these weed lines, but then you'll come to a little spot where for whatever reason you got a little sand spit, a little a gravel pile, a couple of rocks, a uh, harder bottom, and the walleyes will find those spots. They don't like to sit on that soft mud. I don't think, I think they like to, they get that soft silt in their gills. They don't like that. So uh, they'll pick out these harder bottom spots. And uh, the other thing is if there's any kind of a little indentation in the weed line, a little corner, uh, a little point in the weeds, those are the kind of spots that are going to hold the fish. Yep. Well, you got them. That feels a little nice. I don't even know you had a bite. <laughs> I'll get the net. Okay. Okay, there he is. Another nice little walleye. Yeah, you know, it's kind of starting to turn on here just before dusk. Yeah, and the best is probably yet to come. <laughs> Let's see here. Well, you got him hooked, I'll say that, Dan. <laughs> He wasn't about to get away. That's a nice walleye. Now this is one thing if you're going to fish one of these weed lakes. You are going to be fishing in the weeds and you are going to get weeds stuck on your sinker. If you use a regular walking sinker or even an egg sinker, you're going to be picking off weeds all day long. Uh, my choice for a lake like this is one of these bullet sinkers. And I like that, particularly like these long skinny ones like that. Now those things will slide right through the weeds and you very rarely get a weed stuck on your sinker, so it saves you time, it, it helps you catch more fish. Now there's, there's a couple of really nice marks right there, about uh, 13 feet. It looks like you might be in a little school of them here. It's kind of right in the area we've been getting them too. And there's some more coming on there right now. Yeah, there's fish down there. So you have to get them to bite. We're into some perch and we're into some sunfish here, and you know they, that 
sucker end of the leech is not very tough, and a lot of times those fish will just pick that leech off there, you won't even know it's gone. So what I like to do when I'm fishing in a lot of panfish is hook that, turn the leech around the opposite way. And this is actually the head end. The narrow end is the head end. And that neck portion of the head end, right like this, is extremely tough. And you can hardly pull that thing off of there. It's, it's five times as tough as that sucker end. So you let that leech down there, it'll still swim. In fact, it actually swims more naturally because now it's swimming head first. And uh, it's a very good way to hook the leech, and I, I like to do that when I'm into the panfish. Yeah, I, I would not advise anybody to play around with a 12, 14, even some guys even use 16. Just stick to that three and a half, four foot leader. Uh, your bait's you know your bait's not going to ride up any higher like people think. It's going to be right at the same depth, and there really is no advantage to doing it. So uh, just just uh, stick with a moderate length leader. That'd be my advice. I think we're fishing such a small little area right here between weed beds. Is that, uh, do you drop that marker off right on the edge of the weed bed? What I like to do is, is throw that marker downwind to the area that I'm fishing. So the wind is coming right in our face here now, and I'm trying to troll along a line like this. So I want to throw the marker downwind. Otherwise, it's going to unroll. If I threw it up here, it would unroll. It would be right across my line of troll, be right in my way. So right now, as it is right now, I can use it as a reference point. I know exactly where I am, but it's not in my way. There's one. It's right on cue, right when that sun's going down. There he is. Got him? Yep. Not too bad. It's pretty good. It's a little nicer. Right down there. It goes under the boat. <laughs> there he is. All right. That's a little better size. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice fish. Pretty fish. Real typical stocked walleye lake fish right there. And you know, even if you like to fish big lakes, what you should do is research the smaller lakes around your area because there's going to be days when you get blown off. And there's dozens of lakes like this where you can go out and save the day and catch nice walleyes like this. I think you can see that walleyes are truly a fish for all seasons and hold a special place in the hearts of anglers across the country. The waters in which they thrive offer anglers a variety of angling opportunities and effective techniques. We hope you learned a few presentations that will make your time on the water more productive. No matter how you fish them, walleyes are a heck of a lot of fun to catch and there's nothing better than a frying pan either. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this edition of the Complete Angler Video Series. What's more, I hope to see you again real soon.